Hey everyone, in the news this week, tragedy as 51 people are killed in a horrific train derailment. The accident's been labelled, quote, made in Taiwan. The BBC also announced that Sue Cook was going to be leaving a question of sport, presumably along with most of the viewers. And in COVID news, Scotland lifted its stay-at-home rule, although it's not expected to have any real impact on whether or not the football team travels to the World Cup next year. However, the big story for me this week has been the increasingly farcical situation involving France, the EU and the AstraZeneca vaccine. And it's perhaps worth looking at the timeline of what's been going on. First of all, the EU made an absolute pig's ear of its COVID response from evangelising and open borders in the midst of a pandemic to promising a strong financial response. It was ultimately a bit like the dragon my little boy drew the other day. You know, very cool on paper, but utterly fictitious. The UK, on the other hand, is a world medical research leader. It was very quick to test, license and roll out drugs faster than someone backstage at Woodstock. It even rained a lot. And we ended up in a ridiculous situation where, for a while, there were more vaccinated Germans living in the UK than there were in Germany. All the meanwhile, the president of France is Emmanuel Macron, and he played the EU anthem at his inauguration and very much sees the bloc as something to be embraced as a tool for French supremacy. He tried to block vaccine exports from Belgium and Italy in order to divert them to France. And later, when that failed miserably, he was the ultimate bad loser and started spreading conspiracy theories about the AstraZeneca vaccine, about it being deadly. And you know, it's unknown whether he believes in other theories such as Flat Earth or Bigfoot, although he presumably calls that uh, 30 centimetre foot in France. Anyway, either way, it's like a petulant child claiming that they didn't want the ice cream anyway. And now we're in a bizarre situation where having backpedaled, the French public no longer trust the medical establishment and the country sinking into another wave of death in a second summer of lockdown, all whilst the British tourism industry is preparing to reopen. You know, there's no Christmas cracker joke about how France's favourite pharmaceutical is paracetamol, but the Parisians are far more likely to be staying at home these days rather than going to the doctor. And vast stocks of vaccines are now having to be systematically destroyed because they're passing their use-by dates. Your know, medicine doesn't get better with age like a bottle of claret or a slab of Rockford. You know, if I was going to use a cheese pun, I'd say the situation is not good. And if I was going to use a wine pun, then I'd say that things were far from rosé. And now Michel Barnier, of all people, is attacking the EU for compliance and incompetency, which for the UK is a bit like watching the poacher becoming the gamekeeper. You know, it's also an election year coming up soon in France, and Emmanuel Macron therefore has no option but to go all in and drag the EU further into the gutter for his benefit. And we thus see him blaming Brussels and London for holding back France, which is a game plan that frankly Marine Le Pen knows far better how to play. All the meanwhile, Germany is letting this happen, languishing under Angela Merkel's slow departure and a lack of strong leadership. Although given what Germany is like when it does get a strong leader every hundred years or so, that's probably a good thing. You know, France and Germany is bad as each other, really. I once heard the Germans conquered France by marching in backwards so that the frogs would think they were leaving. Anyway, see you next week. Like these, click subscribe.